Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to discover how to see more of your photo in Photoshop Elements. I recently received an email from someone who had upgraded to Photoshop Elements 13. She had previously been using Photoshop Elements 10 on a desktop computer. Now she was using Photoshop Elements 13 on a 13-inch laptop. She was disappointed how Elements had gone from the thin options bar at the top of the window to the much larger tool options panel at the bottom of the window. She also found it frustrating that the various dialog boxes were so big that they ended up covering up much of her photo in the active image area. In addition, she said that if she moved the dialog box over to the right of the screen, the next time she called up a dialog box, it would show up in the middle of the screen again. To begin, I just want to say that I couldn't duplicate the problem with the dialog box appearing in the middle of the elements window. Once I moved mine over to the side, the next time I opened that dialog box, it would open over on the side where I had moved it. Let's start by addressing the tool options panel first. It's true that the tool options is much larger than the old options bar. At the time of this video, Photoshop Elements 13 is the latest version of Elements, and that's the version you see on my screen right now. The tool options is this panel down at the bottom of the window. Every time I click on a new tool in the toolbox, so I'll go switch to different tools, the options change to correspond to the last tool I click on in the toolbox. The tool options was first moved to this spot in Photoshop Elements 11. So this is where it's located in Photoshop Elements 11, 12, and 13. Now let's go over to Photoshop Elements 10 and see what that looks like. Here we are in version 10. In version 10 and older, the options bar was the equivalent of the newer version's tool options. It's this bar that runs along the top of the elements window. Every time I click on a new tool in the toolbox, it changes to reflect the options available for the last tool I clicked on. The same as the tool options does in the newer versions. And down at the bottom of the window is the project bin, which shows a thumbnail of any photos that I currently have open in Photoshop Elements. I have two photos open, so that's what those two thumbnails are that we see down in the project bin right now. You can collapse the project bin by double clicking on its tab. And when I do that, the active image area immediately expands to fill that space and we can see more of the height of the open photo. Actually, with this particular photo, we can now see the photo in its entirety at 100% view without having to scroll. See down in the left corner, it tells us that we're viewing this photo at 100%. Now, if I click on the Project Bin tab, the Project Bin expands to take the space away from the active image area. Notice we're still viewing the photo at 100% view, but now, if we want to see the whole photo at this size, we have to scroll up and down to do so. You can do that by using the scroll bar on the side here. Let's go uh, back to Photoshop Elements 13. Notice we're viewing our photo at 100% view, and just like when we had the project bin open in Photoshop Elements 10, we have to drag the scroll bar to see the entire height of the photo. There's the top and there's the bottom, but I can't see all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom all at one time. We could go to a smaller view, but for our example, I just want to illustrate what's going on at 100% view here. Now, we can collapse the tool options by clicking on this little down arrow over on the right. When I do that, the tool options collapse, and just like when we collapse the project bin in version 10, the active image area expands to fill that space and we can see our entire photo without scrolling. And the person acknowledged in her email that you could close it but said as soon as she chose a different tool from the toolbox the tool options would expand again and use that space up at the bottom of the window. Let's try that. I'll switch to the move tool and sure enough the tool options expands again and encroaches on the active image area. 
Luckily, there's a way to keep the tool options from expanding every time you select a new tool. Let's click on the little icon that's next to the collapse arrow, the one that looks like four horizontal lines with a tiny arrow next to it. When I do, a pop-up list appears. The option at the bottom of the list is called Auto Show Tool Options. Notice that it has a check next to it indicating that it's turned on. That's why the tool options appear every time we choose a different tool from the toolbox. Let's click on it to turn it off and to close the pop-up list. Let's test it to see if it worked. First I'll collapse the tool options again by clicking on the arrow. Now I'll go over to the toolbox and choose a different tool by clicking on it. And it did work. This time the tool options didn't expand. Now if you have the auto show tool options turned off and you actually do want to see the tool options, you can always click on its icon down here to expand it. There it is right there, the second option. So if I click on it, it shows. And I can also hide it by clicking on that icon. Now let's address her problem of the dialog boxes covering up a large amount of the open photo in the active image area. I'm on a desktop computer so it's not as much of an issue as it is if you're on a laptop computer with a smaller screen. Unfortunately there's no way to change the size of the dialog boxes. But we can move our photo and the dialog box further apart from each other so that the dialog box isn't right on top of your photo. Currently I'm in tab mode in Elements. That means that only one photo at a time is in the active image area. But there's a tab at the top of the active image area for any photos that are currently open in Photoshop Elements. The tab shows the name of the photo among other things. I have two photos open in Elements. The one we have active right now is called Happy Girl and this other one is called Leaf. You can switch to any of the open photos by clicking on their tab. So if I click on Leaf, that becomes the active photo and that's what we see in the active image area. But there's another mode other than tab mode that we can choose. That is float in window mode. You can go into that mode by going up to the window menu and choosing images and float in window. But that option is grayed out, meaning we can't select it. That's because we need to change a preference first. On a PC, you'll find the preferences under the Edit menu. On a Mac, it's under this first menu item called Photoshop Elements Editor. So if I click on that, and here's Preferences, and then if I go over, here's General Preferences. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-K on a Mac, or it would be Control-K on a PC. In the Preferences dialog box, look for the box that says Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. In some older versions of Elements, it says Allow Floating Documents in Full Edit Mode, but it does the same thing. So I'm going to actually click on that to make it active, and then click on OK to close the the preferences and to accept that change. And I'm going to make my other photo active, the one of the girl. Now when we go back up to the window menu and choose images, float in window is no longer grayed out so we can choose it by clicking on it. And when we do our photo comes out of tab mode and it becomes a floating window. What does that mean? Well, in tap mode, our photos are displayed one at a time in the center of the active image area, and it's restricted to the boundaries of the active image area. In floating window mode, it's like our photo is in a separate window sitting above the window for Photoshop Elements itself. We can move it to a different area of our monitor by clicking and dragging on its title bar, and we can move it to anywhere we want in our uh, elements window. We can also enlarge the window of our photo beyond the size of the active image area. You can do that by clicking and dragging on the lower right corner of the window. So right now I moved it all the way up to the top of the window and that's as high as it goes. It goes all the way up to the the menu bar 
And now if I click on this, click and drag on this uh, lower right hand corner, I can size the window of that image. If I pull it down this far, I gain that much more space uh, to see my photo. In floating window mode, you can also have more than one photo visible at a time. We've seen the leaf image underneath the girl image, but notice that the leaf is still in tab mode, meaning that it's restricted to the boundaries of the active image area. But we can now go up to the window menu and choose images and say float all in windows. And now any photos that you currently have open in Photoshop Elements will be in their own floating window and can be moved around independently of any other photos. So I can click and drag on the tab for the leaf photo now and move it around. And I can also grab that lower right corner and make it as big or as small as I want it. If you want to go back to tab mode, just go up to the Windows menu again and choose Images, Consolidate All to Tabs, and they pop back into tab mode. Let's look at how we can use this floating window mode to see more of a photo. First, when we get a dialog box, for instance, if we press Command L on a Mac or Control L on a PC to bring up the Levels dialog box, we can move that dialog box over to one side of our window. So I can click and drag it over towards the right. And because I'm on a bigger monitor, it's actually out of the way now, but it might still might not be out of the way on a smaller monitor like a laptop. Cancel out of this. So let me go up to Images, Float and Window. Okay, so now our girl photo is in a floating window again and I'll call up the Levels dialog box and it's where I had moved it to. If I move my photo of the girl way over here, now we have all this distance in between the dialog box and the window that our photo is in. Remember when we're in tab mode, our photo gets centered in the active image area so we can't have it all the way over to the left like we can with the floating window. So to recap how to see more of your photo and elements, here's what we can do. First of all, we can stop the Tool Options panel from appearing every time we click on a new, a new tool by clicking on the little icon that looks like four horizontal lines with an arrow next to it. And actually I have to call up the Tool Options to do that. But it's this icon here if you remember and it's this auto show tool options. We want to make sure that that does not have a check next to it. So now it does. I'll click on it so now it doesn't have a check on it next to it. Then we can click on the tiny arrow to the right of that icon to minimize the tool options panel. So I'll do that. If we go to Preferences, and that can be accessed by pressing Command or Control K, and make sure that Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode is checked. If it's not, just click on it to check it. Click OK to close that box. Go up to the Window menu, and go to Images, and Float in Window. We can move our photo around if we want, move it over to one side, and then if we call up a dialog box, let's choose a different one this time. Let's go to Enhance, Adjust Color, Adjust Hue Saturation. And actually it did come up and it's over my photo a little bit. And I'm on a desktop so I can just pull it way over here if I want to. And now I have all this space in between my photo and my dialog box and I'm just going to say OK to this without making any changes just to show that if I bring that box up again by choosing it from the menu this time it popped up where I dragged it to the last time. The person that wrote me the email apparently was having trouble getting that to work and I'm not sure why that is at this point. So that wraps up this video on how to see more of your photo. I hope you found it helpful. 
until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.